welcome to Politics and Right. My name is Egberto Willis, your host. Good morning, Houston. Good morning, Harris County. Good morning, the great state of Texas. Good morning to the United States of America. Good morning to the world. And of course, good morning to every corner here in our voices through the air or 100,000 watt transmitter that goes to the upper ends all over Texas and even into Louisiana. <laughs> and of course, our internet international all reach welcome everybody we are going to have a great show today but before we get started we pass it on to the geniuses who i hope are not as sleepy as i am right now good oh, yeah. morning howard good morning. Yawn. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, we're going to get the energy up here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 100,000 watts blowing across Texas, blowing across Louisiana, blowing across your radio. It's Politics Done Right on KPFT Houston. Man, I got to change my entry, dude. I got to I got to wow. create a new. That was like, that was marvelous, sir. Well, that's like 1950s, uh, you know, radio. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded great, though. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay, well, I'm not going to take up a whole lot of time because Jack has a full page of stuff he wants to talk about. Oh, my Jack, God. Gonna... Let's have it, Jack. All right. Well, it's about the Social Security. You know, what are the names of those Democrats joining the G GOP's backdoor attack on Social Security? I'm a boomer. Every paycheck I ever received had Social Security deductions taken out. This program pays for itself. The people who work pay into the program, and the people who have paid into Social Security 40 or 50 years are the benefactors of this program. What's wrong with that? Why are our politicians trying to undermine this important social safety net? Remember the old vote. So you mean-hearted Republican politicians and you treacherous Dems that are betraying your constituents? Shame. 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 Shame on you, you rats. Look, look in the mirror. Well, the reason why they're doing this is because they want the money, man. Yeah, they just want to profit from it. They don't care about anything else but money. Money is their god. Yeah. Privatize the profits. Socialize the cost. Communists. <laughs> oh, if they were are. if they were only communists, you know, <laughs> they're lower than communists. <laughs> yeah, I anyway, tell you, man. You know, we have got uh, old people have guns too. Remember that. Yeah, no. we have a lot of them because we've been able to buy them over the years. You've been able <laughs> to keep. You've been able to keep those gun companies afloat. Keep those companies populated with profits and cash. I, oh, only buy, I only buy the stolen ones. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I hear you, man. I hear you. Be a couple of Crown Vicks show up at my house and go, hey, you know, what's going on here? It, it's crazy, man. But look, guys, we got a great show for you today. Look, we have a lot of turn. You know, I have a website that I built. I don't remember. I think it was during the, uh, the oh, I, I, I don't remember exactly, but I think it was during the, um, Healthcare debate where a whole lot of the bad things. Obamacare was a lifesaver for many, including uh, I can say that it also was a lifesaver for me as a as a sole proprietor. Um, when other com when companies didn't want to give insurance, that law a lot that law forced insurance companies to give give insurance whether you had pre existing conditions or not. It really put some guardrails on insurance, even as bad as they still are. It plays some guardrails on it. So this was very important. And I remember uh, during that time that, uh, you know, everybody wanted to say, you know, the Republicans screw this up. Republicans. Well, I mean, if you know that a particular sect or group screw things up, right, the, you don't need to give them help to do it. And what happened is all the things that made Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, less than optimal was because you had turncoat Democrats who, instead of thinking about the people, were, as Jack would say, always thinking about the, the corporations. And that is why we didn't have the public option in, uh, in inside of Obamacare. That is why 
Obamacare had some crazy deductibles, et cetera. That is why Obamacare was really paid for, not by, uh, except for the, uh, the Medicaid expansion to the Affordable Care Act. A lot of people think Obamacare was a giveaway. No, Obamacare is actually taxes that you paid. So that's why if people don't work uh, enough hours and make enough money and pay enough taxes, they don't qualify for subsidies under the Obamacare mantra. Uh, there are so many technicalities within healthcare and these other programs that we just don't understand because they are made complex. And a lot of the reasons they are made complex are bad politicians, bad Democrats, etc. And so it's going as well for this border security uh, issue uh, that we're having. So I'm going to start. I'm not going to hit Social Security. Well, let me tell you what all the subjects are going to be today. We may get to them. We may not get to them all. But if uh, you can always go to my newsletter, politicsandright.com slash newsletter. Again, that is politicsandright.com slash newsletter to see all that we were going to talk about today. But the first topic, the title of the show today is Three Dems Join GOP on Social Security Attack. Crockett and Porter schools GOP on immigration and uh, uh, yeah and and the other subject is the uh, is is going to be an extension of this social security thing so what I want to do is uh, uh, set this up for you and I'm just as I'm speaking I just realized wait a minute I put these stuff up but I don't think I mapped the programs to the studio and I just mapped it to the studio i believe i believe i am mapping it to the studio right now to make sure you guys can hear it as we play it okay i'm pretty sure it's mapped now all right folks so i want you to listen to this piece here ja jasmine crockett and uh you guys should all know who colin allred is he's running against uh he's, he's running in the primaries to run against Ted Cruz. Right now, both Gutierrez and Allred are tied against Ted Cruz, but Allred is leading Gutierrez in the polls for the primary. I question that now, especially what when you find out what Allred did. So listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. I want to talk about immigration. As an immigrant myself, uh, who came through and was able to make it through the system, having had a grandfather who had immigrated from Panama many years before I came, who sponsored my mother, my mother then sponsored me, etc. But before that, I had to come on a standard student visa before all of that could be straightened out. But that's it. That's it. Immigration is an issue that Congress has screwed up. And it is an issue that Congress needs to fix. But it's an issue that Republicans are using racist tropes to somehow have Americans all fearing immigrants. And they are putting all kinds of roadblocks in front of Biden or any Democrat that is attempting to create a sensible immigration system to a land that says we are a land of immigrants. And unlike most countries around the world, based on our formation, given our history, it demands that we be the place open for all people from around the world, yet being an orderly fashion. But our history dictates that this land, this land that consumes more so than any other land around the world, that we be open to the rest of the world in an orderly fashion. And it was great to see a, a, a strong woman in Jasmine Crockett who goes out there and without any hesitation makes sure to point out the hypocrisy, the evil within the right wing who continuously try to demean the immigrants and not only the immigrants, but not, but even, even to the effect of having a governor who insinuates the killing of 
people, immigrants coming over the border. But I want you to listen to her, a strong woman. And then I want to show a contrast between uh, another Democratic congressperson running for the Senate in Texas who caved in to the evil of Republicans. A vote with them on this particular policy in effect is acquiescing to their evil. I want you to listen to this and then we'll, I want you to listen to Jasmine Crockett and then we'll take it on the other side because it's rather important. These people died at our border. In Texas, on Friday, we are here today having a hearing and the pro-life party does not want to talk about the fact that there was basically state issued or sanctioned death at the Texas border. There can be nothing more inhumane than the fact that we have not even decided that we were going to discuss this on the pro-life side. But you know what? I I do want to talk about some other facts that we have. Republicans can't do the basic job that we are supposed to do. You see, in two days, we are scheduled to shut down. They can't figure out how to do a budget because we're six months behind. But somehow they are going to solve this complex issue of immigration. I seriously doubt it. And to quote a great known as Riri, also known as Rihanna. How about we give a round of applause, a standing ovation, because we have absolutely had nothing more than performative politics. In fact, my Texas colleague just finished his comments by specifically talking about the election in November and who's going to win it. We are not here to campaign. We are supposed to be here to legislate, but we have done everything except for legislate. So let's go through a few more facts. Democrats have introduced legitimate, sensible legislation to address what we're seeing. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle want to grandstand for political purposes rather than work with Democrats and fix an immigration system that has been broken for decades. Republicans continue to vilify people, including mothers and their children. And as I just said, we just lost a mother and her children. We also know that the gentle lady from Florida, who happens to be the only member to give birth this session, specifically admitted that she actually wants a child separation policy. I can't think of something more ironic than that particular member specifically advocating for child separation policies. Republicans are yelling that states don't have the tools to help with migrants, but rather than work with Democrats, Republicans are targeting communities of color and democratic cities like Chicago, New York, and Philadelphia. And while they say that it's about Democrat run cities, I do want to point out another similarity that they have. These are cities that are run by African Americans. So while I know that they love to pretend as if there are no racial undertones, it is just striking to me that we specifically are going after African American run cities. And we talk about the mayor of New York. I, I don't know when I've ever seen so much bipartisanship and agreement out of the Republicans, but they continue to talk about what the mayor of New York has said. Let me tell you about somebody else who wants to speak out about New York. And, and I want to make sure that she understands that the Democrats aren't the problem, but the Republicans are. And that's Cardi B. Cardi B specifically talked about her frustration because the mayor came out and said that they don't have the resources that they need. But guess who has actually tried to give the resources to these cities and who has stood in obstruction? President Biden. To be clear, President Biden has tried to give state and local governments and nonprofits federal resources to support temporary food, shelter, and other services. But MAGA House Republicans are refusing to give those cities and states those resources. President Biden has tried to put 1,300 more Border Patrol agents at the border to help, but re Republicans have obstructed that request. Republicans want to cut the flow of fentanyl coming into the United States. President Biden has tried to give our border agents 100 new cutting edge inspection devices and add 1,000 additional law enforcement personnel. Republicans obstructed that request. Honestly, I can't tell if y'all are for anything other than obstruction and cruelty. 
Just take a look at my governor last week. He said, and I quote, the only thing we're not doing is we're not shooting people who come across the border because, of course, the Biden administration would charge us with murder. I know Governor Abbott doesn't understand the law, but let me say this. That absolutely would be murder. Now, Jasmine Crockett nailed it in every possible direction. But there is a congressman from Texas. His name is Colin Allred. Colin Allred, the football star who could could who is supposed to be strong, who is supposed to be moral. He goes out there and he votes with Republicans against Biden, calling out Biden. I want you to, first of all, get a list of these. I'm going to put it on the screen. List of Democrats who immorally voted with Republicans. 14 House Democrats voted for a GOP resolution to condemn Biden's open border policies. How dare any Democrat hang on to that lie about an open border policy? Already. Caraveo, Craig, Cuellar. We expect it from Henry Cuellar. Henry Cuellar is a guy who doesn't even respect a woman's right to her own person. Davis, Glus Camp Perez, Golden, Gonzalez Vicente, Landsman, Lee of Nevada, Moskowitz, Nickel, Petola, Sorensen. Those Democrats must be primaried. All of them. And as far as Colin Allred becoming the senator who is going to go up about Ted Cruz. How can he go up against Ted Cruz if he's such a timid person that he goes ahead and vote and a, a, a resolution that condemns President Biden as an open border policy president? No Democrats in their right mind would give a talking point, a lie like that to any to any Republican person, because that vote from Cuellar, that vote from uh, uh, Allred will be used over and over again. He may think it will help him with the with the Senate contest that he's in right now that he hopes to win against El Senor Cruz. But let me tell you. He will not. In fact. Every Democrat out there, there is a good Democrat running and he's not some he's not some right or left wing liberal running. He's a he's a fairly moderate type of Democrat running. But he came out against uh, what Allred did, as he should. But he's also running for Senate. Allred, uh, let me take my host hat off right now. Colin Allred has lost my vote. Period. You know, uh, when you have strong women like Jasmine Crockett go out there and points out what the president is wanting to do and being blocked by Republicans, when you have an all red going out there, a, a, a Colin all red going out there, the football star going out there and going against the president in this particular instance based on a lie. After Jasmine Crockett has pointed out item for item what the president is trying to do with the issue at the border, it's shameful. Luckily, the senator that it, the, the, the state senator that was running against Allred came out and, and blasted him. He said, State Senator Roland Gutierrez, who is running against Allred for the Democratic nominee uh, for U.S. Senate, blasted Allred for his vote, saying he sided with the GOP extremists. The Democratic nominee that goes up against Ted Cruz should fight tooth and nail against Trump's dangerous so-called policies. If our nominee agrees with Trump and Ted Cruz's idea of border security, then we are in a hell of a lot of trouble, Gutierrez said in a statement. And he's absolutely right. If we don't have people who are out there ready to buck the lies, ready to ensure that they don't get away with lying to the American people, then what the hell are you doing in the party? What the hell are you doing attempting to do what's right? Great job to Jasmine Crockett. Great statement to Roland Gutierrez. 
Absolutely so, absolutely so. I, I think that that com- that package was complete. Let's go to Donald. And by the way, the number is 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Come on in, Donald. How are you doing this morning, sir? I'm good, Egberto. How are you? Oh, man, I, I, I tell you, after what I already did, uh, it really... It really got to me because uh, I'm going to come to whatever your question is, but I'm going to tell you why I got so riled up about the issue. When 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 people know that their vote is against the interests of many, when people know that their votes are going to hurt somebody, when people know that their votes are dangerous and still take it for personal reasons, I think that is the most corrupt thing one can do. But Let me get off my soapbox and say, Brother Donald, how can I be of assistance? Give me your topic. Did she just honestly reference pop singers in that speech, Gabe? Yes, yes. I love the way she did it. I don't like it. I know, but I know, I know, but let me tell you what she did. Sellouts and everything else, whatever. To get paid. And that's who you're going to reference. Now, I'm going to throw you a bone here. When throw me, throw me a bone. Ted Cruz? Where, when's the Senate race with Ted Cruz? Uh, when is it? When is it? It's November. Yeah. November. You better hope the hell it's very cold because him and his family going to be on a jet going to their private vacation. <laughs> he won't even be here to vote. So you need oh. to bring that not the rest of them. I can't believe they reference pop singers now. Okay, stop for a second, Good brother Donald. A couple of days ago. <laughs> Go ahead. Brother Donald, stop for a while. Here's a here what it, you know. You, you see how it riles you up? That is exactly what the intent was because what she ensured is by using Cardi B and Rihanna, she made sure that that sound bite was going to get out there. And she used the sound bite to get the attention on a boring topic that nobody was listening to. Because let me tell you better, I watch this channel, right? The, 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 uh, the, the hearings, etc. And there is so much that occurs in these hearings. You get a lot of stuff, but nobody cares about it. Even though it's, it's where things happen in the hearings, not when you see them on Congress. So the hearings don't get covered. She mentioned Rihanna and Cardi B, and it goes all over the place. And then I get a chance to, you know. So a, a, a lot of it has to do with how do you get to people's ears? We are not. The, we 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 have I still know, a whole. They're all brain dead. Dear okay, brother. With Fetterman. Yes. Talk Fetterman, to me, brother. He had the perfect opportunity. Whenever they complained about the way he was dressed. What did he do? He stood up and said, we need to support the Ukraine war and approve the budget. What he should have said is, how about we put on black robes, white wigs, powder our face white, and look just like Parliament across the pond that we got away from. Oh. I can wear a incentive for because <laughs> what I say and what I do for my constituents is what matters, not the way I'm dressed. I'm not a puppet, and I'm not going to stand up here and be a puppet for you. My constituents voted me in and they don't care how I dress as long as I get the job done. Donald, I know, Donald, Donald, I know there was a reason you were my favorite Republican. I knew there was a reason you were one of my favorite Republicans, you know, because you tell it like it is, brother. Mr. Christian Ziegler, y'all missed the opportunity. They should have said, Mr. Christian, you and your wife both agree you don't want the school to teach you kids about this, that, and the other. But what about when your little kid comes in for that glass of water and knocks on the door and figures out you got two mommies and a daddy, a two mommy daddies, and what's daddy doing? <laughs> and they're going to teach it in their house the way they want, not the school. <laughs> hey, you know something? I'm going to ask you something, Donald. Listen to me and listen to me clearly. You prove my point every day. And that is, you know, I mean, uh, you know, we all deep on the inside, except for ideological hoopla. Hey, we were all one, bro. Good. You're, you're a good man. My, my, oh, I know. Hey, one other thing. 
Those, oh my God, he never stops. <laughs> call, I know the ones that call in and say that F whatever, I don't want to know about their personal fantasies and what they want to do with the president. But if the woman president gets elected, she's not that bad looking. I'd be okay with that. So they need uh, to Okay, on, you okay. Know, you <laughs> <they wanted to. laughs> Donald, behave yourself. Behave yourself, but look here, man. Right, Let me you tell you, you have a good one. Yeah, I'll talk to Ta you later. Yes, All sir. right, take care, brother. Peace. Anyway, folks, the telephone number is 713-526-5738-713-526-5738. Si tienen algo para la inmigración que quieren hablar, llámame, por favor, 713-526-5738. 5738 Hablo en español o en inglés. Either Spanish or English. Give us a call. 713 Five two six five seven three eight. You know, we talk a lot about this immigration issue, and this is a big immigration issue, and there are issues at the border. And the thing about the immigration issue is that there is a lot the the the, neg the way it's portrayed negatively and many times justifiably affects both people of all ideologies. I mean, I had a a conversation with a family member. A family member who came over here, uh, and she, she told me when when we were talking about the issue, and I really kind of got upset with her. She said they really should just stay home and wait to come here. And also, she told me something of the sort like, um, "It it is demeaning uh, the way you see them walking across the river and all that sort of thing," right? And w when she said that, it kind of hurt me because I was like, you know what? We came over here. We had a pathway to get over here. A lot of these people are going through paramo. They're going through um, issues not created by them. In fact, many of the issues that they're going through are created by our policies towards Central and South America. And our corporations and what they do to displace people around the world. What would they? What would they do? What do you expect them to do? When we got settled in America, it was the same thing. You wanted to be, you were displaced, and you came to the land of plenty, America. The Irish did it. The British did it. The French did it. The Germans did it. All these people did it. The first settlers that came here, and I, I, this is a particular history I always tell people. Remember, they came here to conquer, kill, and take. These people that are flying over the border are coming just for a job, not to conquer, not to take. And we need them. I'm going to play, uh, lay, after I speak to Anita, I'm going to play one of my favorite congresswomen. Katie Porter. But anyway, Anita, come on in, my dear friend. Hi, good morning, Roberto. How are you? Good morning, Anita. How are you doing? Good. I just turned on your show and I got fired up, so I had to call in. Well, um, call, come on in. So I wanted some feedback for your show. And first of all, I love your show. Um, I've met you at some different human rights things. So it's not a critique of you personally, but as a woman listening to your show, it's really troubling for me to hear you calling people brother and sister. Not that part. I appreciate that, even though I couldn't do that. And that's why I like your show. But when people say things like, if she's a good looking woman, she could be my president. I would appreciate if you that caller in their place the way you do for other problematic statements and not chuckle along and say to behave yourself. I feel like that's some nonsense. That's the kind of thing Trump says. And I know that that's not something you support. And I know that you want to maintain relationships with people who have really different views. But that just makes me want to not listen to the show because I feel like, first of all, I hear from male listeners mostly. And second of all, like, if I'm a woman who's marginalized for hearing stuff like that every day and I have daughters, I just think you need to correct that. Okay, let me, let me, let me tell you one thing, Anita. First of all, thank you, thank you, and thank you. I want women, everybody to call into my show 
and put me in my place where I fail. That's number one. Okay, that's number one. So thank you. And I, I mean that mean that from the depths of my heart. Secondly, uh, when Brother Donald, and notice I call Brother Donald, sister this, because I try, if, if I consider people my brothers and my sisters, I have to love them. I have to, you know, I have to bear with the things that occur. Donald, you heard what Anita just said. And Anita is absolutely right. Donald is a regular caller. Donald, let's make sure and listen to what Anita has to say because Anita is correct. Thank you for that, Anita. No excuses. Just uh, got to do better on that. Go ahead. I appreciate you. Have a great day. No, that's all I wanted to tell you. I mean, I know, I know we're aligned, and um, I have a lot of conservative friends. So it's not that I don't call them my brothers or sisters. My point was, if we're going to embrace everyone, let's embrace everyone equally. Got that's you. I'm corrected, right. and I'll I will remember that. Thank you, Anita. Yeah, no problem. Have a great one. Uh, and again, Anita is absolutely right. I mean, uh, l- let me tell you, um, we went to a, not we, my wife went to uh, 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 two of us, but, but I, uh, two of us, um, uh, Dr. Thais uh, called me up one time uh, from, the piece, from the center at the university at the college and he said Egberto I want I have a program that I want to put together and that is to put a uh a a black church and a white church together you know predominantly black predominantly white church so that we can discuss in these times where racial issues are coming up so we can discuss issues so uh I went ahead and I spoke to uh the pastor at the Luke and he spoke to the pastor at uh the uh church here in Kingwood. And these churches meet every month to discuss these issues. Uh, now I, you know, both of us would go to the meetings every, every, every month, but we are both busy. So we had other things to do. So the meeting is on, on, uh, self, what is it? It's on autopilot. Now the two pastors are working with their congregations, etc. My My wife came home and she said, today, I really lost it there because many of the white congregation couldn't see a few things. And one of the answers that really riled her up was that's how it has always been. And nobody normally talks up. They just kind of sit back and shake their head as opposed to actually engaging. And, you know, I, so I commended her yesterday when she came home and told me the story. And it's like, yeah, that that is great that you, did that and that you know because un- unless people hear this and know this they don't know how you feel about it or what's going on and i think uh what anita did there was score me up exactly as you know we we did in this group and that is you got to let it out and just let people know what's going on so again great anita all right i have another another uh cut and this is on an immigration cut again it seems like we're going to get to it all on this immigration cut is from Katie Porter and Katie Porter points out okay how important immigration is uh with respect to birth rates etc let's go ahead and play that one and then we'll take it on the other side leave it to Katie Porter our whiteboard woman who loves the numbers and again once again she points out the importance of immigration and why instead of looking at the border as some sort of an issue we should look at a border as saying people want to come here we need people our social security need people our medicare need people because we are a population in decline How else best to grow than to bring other folks into the land of opportunity, the land that really is a land of immigrants, the land who needs atoning by ensuring those who can get here appropriately do. I want you to listen to Katie Porter, then we'll take it on the other side. Republicans seem, as Mr. Timmons just did, to acknowledge that immigration can benefit our economy, and they seem to say the problem is um, unlawful arrival. Um, So let me take them for a minute at their word, and most Americans agree with this, by the way, that lawful immigration 
is a boon to our country and to our economy. Let's understand why, and then let's look at why that isn't the solution to this problem. Mr. Beer, is the U.S. population um, growth rate declining? It's down 90% from its historic highs. Okay. Can you have a growing economy and a declining birth rate in the long term? You, will, you can have economic growth with a de- declining birth rate, but it's more difficult. Okay. And I think we can all look at examples around the world of countries that are struggling with this. So our population will start to decline in just a few years, in 2030, if current immigration and demographic trends continue. Correct? That's right. So if population does begin to decline, what are some likely harms to the U.S. economy? Well, look, you look at the social security system. If we do not have another 30 million workers available by 2034, then the social security administration expects we will have, then we're facing a situation where taxes are going to have to go up a lot in order to fund the system. And that's going to be a catastrophic hit to taxpayers and or to social security benefits um, one or the other. So, so that's one example. Obviously, economic growth is going to be impacted as more people retire. We've heard about the employment rate going down. Well, that's because people are retiring, uh, not because fewer people are working. If you look at the prime age employment rate, it's high, but that's not enough to make up for all the retirees uh, that are uh, no longer working. And Mr. Beer, collectively, even if we just look at Social Security, forget collectively, if we just focus on Social Security, we are talking about in the next few decades, trillions of dollars of shortfalls that could effectively decimate Social Security. Yes, absolutely. You're talking about over uh, $12 trillion deficit in, in the short term. Okay, so then let's, let's say we agree that we need lawful immigration. And I, I hear our witnesses and our, our colleagues on the other side saying, well, lawful immigration, I'm, a, I'm for that. I'm just not for unlawful immigration. So let's talk about this. Of the people who apply, who use the system, and they follow the rules, which I think Americans think we should, they apply for a green card. What percentage of them get it? That's 3%. So 97% do not get one. 3%. I hear all the time from people that they would like people who want to seek a life in this country to follow the rules and, quote, get in line. But... If you, there is no line at all for many, many countries. Can you explain that? Right. So some countries, you know, you can apply for the lottery, right? You know, if you're from a country without a large legal immigration flow already to the United States. But for many countries, whether Mexico, India, China, uh, 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 Central American countries, uh, Venezuela now, they're banned from even applying for that that green card lottery. So there's no direct path for them. If they don't have a U.S. citizen family member in the United States, they're out of luck unless they are extremely highly skilled uh, individual, you know, PhD, master's degree in STEM uh, has a chance, you know, again, through the H1B lottery. So we got lotteries on top of lotteries, even for the highest skilled people. So I think this is a really important point for the American people to understand and really important for Democrats to stake out here. What is our position on immigration? And it is that immigration is a huge benefit to our economy from which we all benefit. Whether we are generations past from coming to this country or new immigrants, everyone, every American benefits from a strong, stable, globally competitive economy, and we have to have legal immigration to get there. That's platform one, in my view. The second platform is we want people to follow the rules, to to have an orderly system. But we have to be honest, despite the efforts of the Biden administration, there is still, because Congress has failed, Republicans and Democrats have failed our economy and the American people because we have not created an orderly system. You cannot wait in line if there is no line. You cannot take your turn if we don't provide a chance to get to the front, to get a chance to apply. So the fundamental problem here is we have a broken immigration system. And what we're seeing in terms of unlawful immigration We shouldn't be blaming people seeking a better life. We ought to be willing to look in the mirror in this body, in the Capitol, and take responsibility for our failure to update the immigration system and to create an orderly way to boost our economy. As usual, Katie Porter nails it.
And it, it, she, she was unapologetic in pointing out that, yes, we want immigration. Stop the, the fallacies. Stop the bad stuff. Bring these people into our country, integrate it into our workforce, and let's start making sure that we can continue being a nation of prosperity. What the Republican policies and methodologies are doing right now is ensuring that we are in decline like many other countries on the other side of the Atlantic. Absolutely. So, okay, let's go ahead and bring in Arnold. Come on in, Arnold. How are you doing this morning? Good morning, Berto. Good morning, Uh, sir. Thank you, first and foremost. Yes, sir. Thank you, first and foremost, allowing me to be on your airwaves. Uh, the, uh, oh, as far as topic, uh, great topic, uh, information I did not know about the Biden administration, uh, as far as, uh, you know, what he's doing on, 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 you know, trying to, uh, fix immigration policy and whatnot. Um, uh, so great topics on that. Um, uh, the Crockett, the Lady Crockett, uh, when you know her bringing in uh, Rihanna and Cardi B into her uh, into her thing. Oh, oh, that's kind of what I was going to go on. Uh, so Donald, yeah, I love I love what Donald says uh, almost every morning when I when I hear him. Uh, the woman who got offended, uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's it's. United States is an over-sexualized country. No bottom line, uh, sex sells. It, it, it's what's it's it's what's gonna it's what it is. Look at look at how Cardi B and Rihanna made their money, right? And uh, look at what they had to do to to gain their money. Look at what Rihanna is doing as far as her businesses. One of her businesses with the uh, lingerie, and and what uh, uh, Victoria's Secret had to do in order to compete with Rihanna, right? So, so I mean, powerful, powerful women. Uh, h- h- how did they get their money to over-sexualize themselves, right? Uh, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't think that is what Anita, uh, Anita was meaning. I mean, uh, men over-sexualize themselves oh, too. Not. No, no, yeah. no, of course not. Yeah. But, no, of course not. But, but, but what I'm saying is America is, that's one of that's one of America's things where we both sexualized ourselves. You know, yeah. When these Republicans talk about oh, you know, these gays and, and schools and, and abortion and this and that, it, it's because we've over sexualized ourselves. That that right. I, 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 that that, I, that, I, I, that sir, sir, I so, agree with that. I think uh, in the over sexualization yeah. or or however we we deal with sexualization is the issue. But uh, you know we are over sexualized as a country. But what we are, as I think Anita would point out, is we are also mis the men, the male. And to some extent, some women are misogynistic, <laughs> and that is what we have to fight. So I, I got, I gotta go. But so what I was gonna say was, <laughs> real quick, Hillary Clinton, Hillary would have won if she would have had some boy shorts on. Huh? I, I don't know about. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I got that stuff about. Uh, boy shorts, but uh, but uh, you know uh, what what Anita says is what what where we really need to be. Melissa is in the house. Good morning, Melissa. How are you doing? Good morning, Houston. I'm sorry, I still have the crack throat, like I'm laying down. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good morning, Houston. Good morning, Egberto. Um, uh, so, well, the guy before, I went, what's his name? Donald. Donald, yeah. He's me. I heard him about to say something. Hi, Donald. Good morning, Will. Um, so uh, I wanted to say, uh, re- comment on uh, the, 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 your, your, what's her name? The one you uh, just had on. Uh, Crockett or you, Porter? You crack, for, uh, I don't, you, well. Jasmine Crockett. Oh. Okay, Jasmine Crockett was the congresswoman that uh, spoke about immigration. Uh, uh, Katie Porter spoke about uh, Social Security and immigration. And Anita called in to complain that I didn't uh, talk to Donald appropriately. No, we well, okay, she, 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 she said what she said. That's cool. Um, she right. But no, you can't stand in line when there's no line. 
So right. I am a friend of several friends who try to do it the legal way. They've been trying to do it the legal way since 2018. They mm-hmm. stay where they at and they keep trying to apply for the green card. They keep getting denied. Why? Because Africa is one of them on the list of not being declined regardless whether you apply or not, mm-hmm. right? So that's why all of these people, they just go through, they go through to the drastic measure like, yo, if I'm sitting over here, I'm sure, I guarantee, I'm sure they didn't already try to apply. Mm-hmm. But just like the lady said, they make it so hard for a lottery and then you expect Abbott or whoever to pass fucking school, vo- I'm sorry for cursing, to school <laughs> vouchers. For mm-hmm. uh, the state lottery, and you see that the immigration has lost their mind with the whole. They don't want to. You can't wait. The lottery is a bull. Is bull. It's bull. Okay. Yes. So I, I, I wanted to commend that lady. Say you cannot stand in line when there's no line. Make put a policy in place to make the to, to create the line, and then maybe the people will start doing it. You know, that that you're talking about that is Katie Porter, one of my favorite congresswomen. And you're right. And she's absolutely right about that. um, Alisa. she's absolutely right about that. Anyway, it's great hearing you. I hadn't heard from you in a long time. I think I heard you on the three. I've been listening listening to you. (laughs) Well, great. I'm glad you're listening. But anyway, anything else you want to say, Melissa, before I run to Alistair? That's a good night. All right. Thank you, my sister. You have a great one. OK. All right. I want to I want to call out my folks in the chat. I sorry I didn't mention you before. Patrick Baron, Eric Hayes. Uh, 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 there was another one that I'm missing. I'm missing. I'm missing. Patrick Baron, Eric Hayes and somebody else is in the chat. I am sorry that I miss you, but I'll find you. Come on in. Alistair, how are you doing this morning? Hey, good morning, Nick Barrett. Good morning, Houston and everybody else. I just wanted to say uh, a lot of us women that listen to the show but can't call in because we're too busy getting people around for the day and, and doing our thing to get going. So can't participate much in the chat on the YouTube video and can't participate much in calling in. Unless the cards fall in the right place. I just wanted to say, you know, yeah, America is pretty misogynistic. And yeah, we got to do better. We got to do better. And you know, Alistair, and and that's why, I mean, and and thank you for pointing out that, hey, women, we are trying to get the kids ready. We're trying to do that. Yes, I listen to you, but I got time to call in or chat or whatever. The other person on the chat is John Horse. Thank you for being here, John Horse. But yeah, and so, so I mean, and these are the things that that we don't think about unless some we hear somebody come on and say it, and you just did, and that is what again. Hey, yeah. a lot of women listen, but we are busy getting the kids lunch together and all of that. We can't be on the phone calling in, uh, which says something about society and, and the whole. So thank you for pointing that out, Alistair. Hey, absolutely, y'all have a safe and blessed day. You too, my dear, beautiful sister. Let's go to Patrick. Come on in, Patrick. Good morning, Roberto. I uh, want to ask you, do you think think that we would need immigrants if we weren't tied to capitalism, if if we had a system that, that rewarded something other than growth? Um, you know, you, you make such a, you make some good points when you call in, when you call out things like growth and all of that, because I, I before I, I'm going to answer you, but I want to digress a bit because a lot of people don't understand when you just say, when we think about growth, Walmart could keep a 3% margin on all its products. Everybody would get paid and do just fine. But because of capitalism, Walmart is capitalized, meaning it's distributed as a whole lot of stocks. And all those people who want stocks, who do no work, want to, that stock to appreciate. That stock only appreciates if people see that that company is making on, on the aggregate more and more growing, 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 growing in, 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 its, in its turnover. All right. And that's why Patrick is saying what he's saying. I mean, a company doesn't need growth. No company needs growth if it's profitable. But the stock market needs that company to grow. Now, talking about that, Patrick, 
uh, I think we would still want to have people if we want to maintain the the, the level in the country, uh, the, the dynamics in the country. That would be my answer to you. Uh, but you are correct in that if we don't have to grow, if we, we if we don't have to have growth, 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 you know, we could do take less immigration. That is true. Okay, and and, and by no means I not enjoy the diversity, and, and I'm welcoming people here. And people refer to other folks as being illegal if they're here. Um, one thing I'd like to point out is that if somebody comes here uh, seeking asylum and we turn them away, we're the ones that are doing things illegally. Uh, um, you know, it, it's funny that a lot. It's, a, it's funny that a lot of people, because of our educational system, don't understand that we're a part of the UN and as a part of the UN, that's a law. Uh, you know, again, again, Patrick, what what I hope to do with this program and, and others who do these types of programs is to highlight things that aren't taught both in school or in by mainstream media as a whole. And it's it's getting worse because. Uh, we have a sect in this country that is intent on making people dumb. And I hate to just say it that way, but the stuff about uh, you can't tell true history. You can't tell the truth because it hurts certain people's feelings. What that means is that we stay uneducated. Anything else, Patrick, before I go to Johnny? Well, yeah, one other thing, two other things. They're defunding education because that's exactly what they want. But what, what I'd like to, finish my argument with, and it's going to take just a minute, and I apologize, but I, I would like to argue that every single president in my lifetime wanted illegal immigration. If they wanted to stop it, it would be as easy as prosecuting the people that hire them. If there wasn't a job here, there would be no incentive. They want it to come. They want uh, a, a flood of immigrants to come in because they want to uh, keep down wages for, for American workers so the economy does better at our expense so that they can get voted in. In 2000, uh, in the early 2000s, Bush uh, Jr. Um, uh, legislated that that wall would be built. 20 years before Trump brought it up, it was already on law. They figured out they couldn't do it because it was destroying ranches. It was going through the middle of cities. It was uh, uh, spoiling economies. And he knew that. And he used that wall, and he spent all that money just to uh, get people's votes. If he didn't want immigrants coming in, he would have changed the policy to where they would be prosecuting people that would were hiring them. Patrick, uh, you nailed it. You and nailed President, it. Patrick, I got to go, but you nailed it. Let me just tell you first off, you nailed sir, it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let's go to Johnny. Come on in, Johnny. All those centrist Democrats who cry, oh, Biden is the best we can do, they're full of it. We see evidence up in Kathy Porter. Katie, I mean, Katie Porter. Katie, Katie Porter. Porter. Thank you. Good. Can you imagine what an undefeatable ticket that would be? Oh, wait a minute. We're so open minded that a person who's a naturalized citizen is not as good as Donald Trump, who is born here. <laughs> it, it is. Oh, oh, no. We're in trouble. Uh, you know what? What is interesting, uh, Johnny, uh, the, 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 the spine that I've been seeing in Congress right now is coming from women and young people. If I were to name the, mo the, the, the most the most moral, the most uh, co the Congress people that are doing well for the people themselves, it would be about uh, five guys and about 20 women. If I started to enumerate it and they would all be young, it is amazing. And, and, and that is what gives me hope for the country. Right. It gives me hope. But, Johnny, the phones are coming off the rack now and I'm going to try to get 30 seconds from everybody. So thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Let, let's talk Monday. All right. Thank you, bro. Let's go to Brian. Come on in, Brian. Let's see. We're going to get Brian in a minute. Brian, you're on. You got about one minute, uh, th 45 seconds. Okay. Does anybody know the international law for claiming amnesty? Uh, I it's think uh, that's what Patrick was talking about. Yeah. The first country that you come to, you can't uh, 
travel and walk seven different countries and say, I want asylum in the United States. You can't do that. Well, uh, here's a th- even law. Okay. Thank you, Brian. That that will I, I will add, add to that on Monday. But the the person that's at the t- gate doesn't know what countries you came through. So there you go. Let's go to Harry. Come on in, Harry. Thank you, Brian. Let's go to Harry. Buenos dias, Roberto Willis, and hallelujah Buenos- to Patsy. I told I told you on this show several weeks ago what he was saying. Prosecute those employers that hire these illegals. He's <laughs> absolutely right. If you do that, you will get a hold on immigration, and they just need to come here the way you did it, Eberto Willis. Get your green card, go through the government proper channels, and you'll be here illegally as an American citizen. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Harry. Now, two 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 com- complaints with Harry. Please don't call human beings illegals. And uh, number two, uh, listen to what. Uh, 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 Melissa had to say, but anyway, um, Harry, thank you for calling in. We got to go to the studio. You're a good man. Keep calling. Okay. All, right, all right, let's go. Come on in studio. Hey, I just wanted to expand on what Patrick had to say. Uh huh. Patrick nailed it. It's it, yes. that is correct. The larger the work pool, the lower the wages. Yes. The larger the immigration problem, the more folks coming here, the lesser the wages. So the, you're playing right into corporate America's hands because that's what they want. Low wages, lots of workers to choose from. It's corporate America. It's right behind it. You just and you know, the, see. the thing about it is undocumented workers don't have, uh, cannot union. I mean, don't, don't get a chance to really bargain. They got to take what they, they, they get. And that in effect reduces salaries, reduces wages. But anyway, uh, for everybody. Ex- exactly. Everybody. But if, so if, if in America, you're winning. <laughs> well, we're going to fix that. That's what we do. And uh, <laughs> we're going to fix that, brother. So Come we, on now. We're we going to fix politics that. Done right. There you uh, go, Jack, brother. You got, man, you got some wisdom for us? No, it's just um, going off what Anita said. You know, sexism is a problem and it's demeaning. And uh, men, we just have to have more respect. Amen. Amen. And, and and again, I want to thank Anita because, you know, Anita, she she said she stopped what she was doing. She called in and she said, let me straighten you up, dude. That what what, what Donald said needed you to have a response to. I, you know, I'm going to feel that the rest of the day, but I, I'll do better. Anyway, folks, uh, we got to get out of here. Thank you, Jack and Howard. Thank you, callers. Love you all. I still love you, Donald, but we're going to have to have a little talk. Uh, let's see what else. I love everybody. All that good stuff. But I got to get out of here. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.